What's cracking, fam? T Money down in the dungeon. Uh, Wednesday evening, bringing you guys a little collection update. Um, I just got this phone the other day. We I returned my Pixel for an S10 just because it was cheaper to get a family plan, and I dropped it last night, so there's a big crack across the screen. So um, I don't know if you guys can see that line right there, but if you can, I apologize uh, for the shitty picture quality. And I have an appointment with like a Chiron or something March 5th to get my phone either fixed, the screen fixed or replaced. I don't know yet. We'll see how severe the damage is, but that sucks. So, um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, just a reminder, uh, 700 subscriber contest is currently going on probably like another week or two for that. I think I have like maybe a handful, uh, so far people that have done videos. So please, uh, feel free. I would actually really appreciate it if you did a response, uh, entered that contest because um, I got some good stuff to give away and it's set for 700 subscribers so it's a, um, a milestone for me anyway so that's cool um, and <clears throat> I wanted to let you guys know so you guys know probably uh, obviously if you've been watching my videos for a while I like to put those uh, plastic protector things over my movies and um, so I found it took me a while to find like the right size for the Blu-ray and then the DVD and then like the steel book and the media book and there's all different sizes and everything. So if you guys have any questions at all about um, what size fits what, what do you need to get? Because people have asked me that in the past. Um, feel free to hit me up and I will give you any information I have. The reason why I mention that is because I finally found the right size for the big old box sets. So if you guys are in the market for a nice plastic sleeve thing, the reason why I get these primarily, uh, not because they look good, they actually look like shit on the shelf when they're all, they're all like, these got these hunky um, plastic sleeves over them, especially when they don't fit like really nicely. Uh, but the reason why I do that is because it, it uh, prevents dust and stuff like that. Because co we collect all kinds of dust particles in this basement, it's musty and not really musty, but dust forms quite a bit. So it, for me, uh, they're dust protectors. They preserve things. It's also pretty damp down here. So um, I feel like it just preserves the uh, beautiful format, of course, or whatever. So that's that. Uh, I wanted to mention that to you guys. I finally found the right size for those. And if you're curious, um, they are... Geez, I guess there's not even a receipt in here. No, there's not. Um, well, get back to me on that. I think it was like... Yeah, there's no, no invoice in here, so it doesn't say. Um, and I don't have my ruler in front of me. I want to say... Um, I don't know. I couldn't even guess. Let me see. So these are six and a half by nine and a half. I'm pretty sure that these are like nine and a half by 10 or something like that. The next size up, but I'll look it up. And then if anybody actually wants to know, um, sorry about that shit guys. Eight inch by 10 inch. Okay, so sorry, there we go. Right there, eight by 10. So eight by 10 cellophane wrap bags is what those are. So they will pretty much cover all of your aero limited edition box sets, uh, indicators, everything like this size. Um, pretty much this is like the max size, I think. Maybe a little bit bigger you can get. But like those big box sets, they don't quite cover, but that's okay. But yeah, so really cool, really come in handy. So I'm happy that I found those. Uh, now pretty much everything has got a plastic sleeve uh, for my collection. <laughs> It's gonna look ridiculous though like one day when i can finally display everything like a library fucking plastic sleeves everywhere but uh all right so let's get into the update uh first up i just want to show you guys a little update on my pin board number three that i've been working on i got some really cool pins for this it's not final i'm just kind of laying them out and then um once it's full i get like a good visual of how i want to do everything so but um i got some really cool ones like this popcorn one uh I don't know who that's from, but Cavity Colors. And then I got this Prowler one and this American Werewolf in London, which are a company called Rat Knife. They do some really cool pins. Uh, a little better detail on those if you can see it up close. 
um, really cool. And then I got this awesome Michael Myers one, um, which was really expensive, but really cool. Co company called Brain Dead. Um, so yeah, just uh, got some really cool new pins recently. So for the pin board, uh, so yeah, it's getting there. It's almost done. I'm trying to buy like this lot of pins from this lady um, on Facebook, but uh, I'm waiting for her to respond. I didn't give her an offer, and she asked me, but I like, I don't, I don't want to lowball her or, or highball. I don't know, you know, I don't know what she's thinking, but based on her other prices, she's selling stuff for expensive. Pins are expensive, man. Pins that go like out of print or whatever, they go for like thirty bucks, which is kind of ridiculous for an enamel pin, but they're cool and they're addicting. So yeah, we'll see about that. All right, so let's get into the update. Um, just a pretty small one, actually. Um, we'll start off with the newest Severn releases. If I'm going to be perfectly honest, I'm not super stoked on these. They're like, I don't know, Jess Franco um, perversion films or whatever you want to call it, sexploitation. Uh, so Night of Open Sex, Cries of Pleasure, and then uh, The Astrologer is actually... Um, not a Jess Franco film. Um, 80s action. Okay, so it's from the director of The Exterminator, The Protector, and Shakedown. Um, as well as the executive producer of Maniac, Cop, uh, Frankenhooker, and Basket Case 2 and 3. James Glickenhouse is the director of this, and this is his film debut. Um, but, yeah, I don't really know... It's also known as Suicide Cult. I don't know much about this, but it stars Playboy Centerfold Monica Tidewell. Um, and it's a bizarre tale of satanic killing, Zodiac Mayhem, and Miss, um, what is it? Messianic Horror, so. The Astrologer. So two sexploitation films and then a weird, um, oh cool, but I do love The Exterminator. So film debut of The Exterminator director, so. That's cool. I'm really looking forward to the Adam Al Adamson uh, box set, the 30 film set that's coming out. It's ridiculous. It's awesome. Can't wait. Um, all right, and then we have Cyborgs, which is a film um, by Scream Team releasing. I like a lot of the stuff they put out. Did I show this in the last update? I can't remember. If I did, I apologize. But futuristic. Um, horror movie i guess sci-fi horror movie uh it looks like some good practical effects um i don't know capture the spirit of the 90s in a bottle and turns it into laugh out loud and outrageous feature film so horror comedy uh then we have this new one from srs cinema sabrosa uh, attack of the giant teacher um i thought this was retro like 70s japanese stuff for sure but it's actually i think a modern film and it's basically about um uh, a teacher and his students that uh, like an alien ship crashes down on planet earth and then uh, they kind of have to fight against them. I'm not sure where the gigantic teacher comes into play, but um, <laughs> it looks ridiculous from the back. So uh, yeah, this is uh, BDR. Anything from uh, Sabrosa is going to be a BDR, which is fine. They put out a lot of really weird stuff. Then I have one I'm really excited to check out called Her Name Was Krista. Really love that EC comic throwback artwork there. A lot of stuff has been, uh, I have another uh, title in this update that's art, very similar artwork to this as well. And then we had um, 1031 artwork that looks like this. A lot of a lot of this going on these days. Maybe too much, I don't know. This sounded uh, pretty fun. Uh, it's a modern, uh, I don't know if it's a slasher or whatever, but this loner goes out on the town, finds a prostitute, and then shit starts going down. Uh, but it's got all the characters and stuff. So I love that. I love the artwork there. So I wanted to support indie horror. They were really, really cool too. I reached them. Uh, Jesse had a few up on the website for Diabolic sold out. So I reached them directly through Facebook and they were super cool. They headed out to me in like two days. So it was awesome. Uh, and this, this is a new one from Synapse Films. Uh, I love Synapse. They put out some really good stuff. Just not enough of it. But uh, this one's kind of weird. I think it's more like raunchy comedy, sexploitation uh that sort of thing about like ski chicks i guess um so i don't know we'll see about this one hot dog the movie uh it stars harkin banks um <laughs> yeah so winter skiing competition goes pole to pole against an uh, arrogant austrian pro 
uh, sorry, American uh, versus an Austrian, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Sounds like it reminds me of um, um, Happy Gilmore, <laughs> but I don't know what it is. But I think it has to do with hot chick skiing. So that's cool. I love, I love uh, ski scene movies. Snow stuff's always awesome. All right, then I got a couple titles from um, 88 Films from their Asian line, Come Drink With Me. Uh, they've been putting out a lot of this Asian stuff lately. I think it's a Shaw Brothers production, maybe not. I know the other one I got is, but basically about this fearless woman who goes out to try and defend a family member or something like that. Uh, so she goes on a quest. Um, but yeah, it says one of the greatest movies ever made in Hong Kong. Uh, so that's that then I have another one called the eight diagram pole fighter which I think this is a later uh, Shaw Brothers film one of the last that they did but supposedly it's really good um, and again it just has to do with like uh, a family seeking vengeance on a family's murdered and the two survivors are trying to take revenge on uh, the murderers people who killed their family so there's that. Then I got a couple kinos. Um, one of them, Force 10 from Navarone. Uh, Robert Shaw and Harrison Ford. That's awesome. Uh, action. I don't know if it's an action western, whatever. It's a sequel to, um, to a movie called... I don't know. Navarone or something like that. Um... There, I actually looked it up. There's no Blu-ray for the for the original film. I think it was just a DVD. But uh, basically, uh, German Nazi regime, and you've got these two guys that are fighting the Germans uh, during World War II um, on a mission in World War II, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, it sounds fun. Uh, great cast. So great supporting cast too. We've got uh, Corporal Miller played by Edward Fox, Day of the Jackal. Uh, of course, Robert Shaw and uh, Harrison Ford. Deadly mission in the darkest days of World 2. Hitler's enemies are storming through Europe, annihilating all opposition. Um, and, yeah, these guys have to uh, fight the Nazi forces. So, that's cool. And then we have this one I'm really excited for. Ag Agatha Christie's Endless Night. Supposedly one of the most, like, brutal uh, Agatha... I don't know if brutal is the right word, but... Um, I guess, startling Agatha Christie films. Um, yeah, basically about a wealthy woman who moves into a home, a dream home and murder starts to take place. So I love some, you know, um, dark Victorian thriller plots. I, I don't know. Uh, stunning climax. Oh, yeah, the climax in this movie is supposed to be great. So uh, this one is from 1972 and it's directed by Bernard Herrmann, which is awesome. Um, so, Legendary Writer, okay, so, okay, cool, so it's from the Legendary Writer of Death of the Nile, Murder on the Ori Express, Orient Express, Witness for the Prosecution in the Mirror's Crack, and Ten Little Indians. Um, Haley Mills is the star of this one, and, uh, it says, Christy fans consider one of her darkest and most shocking twists ever, so that's cool. Nineteen seventy-two, endless night. All right, uh, and then what do I have? Just two more things here, guys. Uh, yeah, so going back to the EC Comics, um, see what I mean? This is happening a lot lately. I like it though; it looks really cool. So, um, but yeah, Puppet Master, the Littlest Reich, surprisingly a really good uh, modern entry in the Puppet Master series. I loved it. Uh, then it's got Udo Kier, uh, Barbara Campton. Awesome. Yeah, just a bunch of uh, puppets going nuts, killing people, um, which is awesome. And it's a, it takes place in like a convention center, so that's really cool. Um, 30 year anniversary of the Toulon murders. So this is happening, and then uh, the puppets are summoned and they start killing people at this convention. So it's awesome. Good deaths, fun. Actually, kind of refreshing for. Uh, Puppet Master movie, I, I thought it was pretty good. 
Last uh, two more titles. Then we have Under the Shadow, which I've heard really good things about. If you're interested in hearing a really good uh, review of this movie, learning more about it, go check out uh, Piz Owl. He does like a really thorough um, review of both the, the release and the film itself. Uh, but it sounds really good. It sounds like kind of like a a superna modern supernatural thriller done right that's not has all minus all the gimmicks of like uh the modern like uh james wan film the mo the modern conjuring universe it's supposedly like actually genuinely creepy and uh it's about a family that's tormented by a djinn i believe um and yeah, it's supposed to be actually really really good so under the shadow i had to pick this up limited edition release from second sight love what they do uh so yeah stoked to check that one out I actually got ordered that in the Bliss Special Edition from Second Sight. So that's not Second Sight. Yes, it is. That's Second Sight. The Bliss one was Eureka, I believe. But uh, I ordered them around the same time. And that one's actually still in print. Last but certainly not least, we have the long-awaited, ultra-long-awaited, super-long-awaited, uber-long-awaited, highly anticipated Elvira, Mistress of Darkness, uh, In Search of Darkness, I'm sorry. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark Presents... Um, a film that is created and produced by Robin Block and directed by David Wiener. Uh, finally, this movie, uh, this company, they put out another uh, In Search of Darkness or, or something recently where they're, due. they're doing documentaries basically of the horror genre. This one primarily being about the 80s film. So you've got like Barbara Crampton, all 80s, um, you know, um, stars or whatever coming together talking about the um talking about the decade of horror and uh, i think john carpenter uh it's hosted by elvira mistress of the dark herself uh yeah and it's just um tracking major theatrical releases obscure titles and straight to video gems in search of darkness explores a multitude of 80s horror films in a year-by-year -year timeline alongside topics including groundbreaking practical effects home video revolution poster art and project marketing creative and budgetary challenging so everything uh, that you need to know the final girl about horror culture in the 80s and and uh and uh, the films of the 80s. So that's really cool. This, I had like back the campaign for this uh, probably almost a year or two, maybe a year and a half ago. And it never came out. And I kept contacting them just being like, what's the deal? Just like, because everybody on like the Facebook feed on Elvira's Facebook feed was like, what's the deal? We bought, we bit, it was supposed to come out, I think originally in like November. And uh, so when it didn't come, they weren't responding to anybody. I finally got an email after communicating with them like 10 times. And they were like, yeah, sorry. Um, the We were having issues with the distributor. They were, I guess the producer of the uh, other release that they had was junk. So they wanted to hire a different um, producer for this release. And I guess it took some time. And so uh, long story short, it finally came uh, February 25th, 2020. I definitely ordered it in like, I don't know, fall of uh, 2019. So it's been a few months uh, which is whatever, you know, um, but they didn't even send me like a tracking number or an alert that it was shipped. All of a sudden it just arrived. I almost damn near forgot about it by then, but uh, I'm happy to have it. You know, I also got a poster and I got a really cool Elvira pin that came with it as well right there. So yeah, cool. All right, guys, that's my update. Um, again, please, uh, if you haven't, I would really appreciate it if you did enter my contest for 700 subscribers. Uh, that would be super cool. And otherwise, I will catch you very soon. Peace.